Hello, it's Amber, your superhero stylist, and today I'm bringing you a review of the children's storybook Coraline by Neil Gaiman. There are spoilers, but nothing that will ruin the enjoyment of the book for you. This is a, lo a longer review, so get comfy. Within the last couple of weeks, the Coraline movie trailer has hit the internet, and with that it has sparked a whole new interest in a, a new fan base. Um, a special movie collector's edition of the Coraline book, right here, is available on the market today. I picked mine up at Midtown Comics. It's a nice compact hardcover edition and it has the original story plus some special features about the movie, including um, right smack in the middle there are these great color pages with images from the movie. They're really awesome. And at the back there are notes from Neil Gaiman from the director Henry Selleck plus some actual script pages. And it's really interesting to read that. Henry Selleck is the perfect choice to helm this project as a movie because um, when you read the, the Coraline story you can actually see how the sculpture style of Tim Burton's Nightmare Before Christmas really would lend itself very well to Coraline and since Selleck is the director of the Nightmare Before Christmas uh, Neil Gaiman fell so in love with that movie that he had his agent track down Selleck before Coraline was even published and this was going back to like 2001 2002 so this has been a long waiting project Selleck is very honest in, the, in his notes and reveals where there are differences between the movie and the book, because typically fans get very picky about that sort of thing. So one of the changes that they did is they made it less frightening. It's a pretty scary book. And they also gave Coraline a sidekick, which is not in the story. Coraline is a twisted account about a young girl, and um, she, she and her parents move into a, a new house. It's actually a great big mansion that's been divided into apartments. She gets bored very easily, and so to create her own excitement, she goes and creates these marvelous adventures for herself. Um, the apartment seems normal, but there's an unoccupied apartment next to it, and she finds a key to a magic door. When she opens the door, it leads to this sort of bizarro version of her own world. The, they basically call it the other world. So the, there's an other mother and an other father over there, and it seems like everything is perfect. They give her her favorite foods and, and everything that she wants. And, you know, as a little girl, she re even realizes back then, you know what, I don't want everything that I want. So it's really hard for her to resist staying there. The anomaly with the others is that their eyes have been replaced with black buttons. And they tell Coraline that in order for her to stay on that side of in the other world, that she has to also replace her eyes and get black buttons stitched in. So it is a pretty frightening image to read to children. That alone is enough to give some nightmares, so you can see why maybe this is toned down a little bit. But you can see in the trailer that it definitely is the element in the movie. The other mother, it turns out, is actually an evil bedlam and she's in charge of the entire other world. She's created it, she manipulates it, she's manipulated all the people over there and the creatures. And over the centuries, she has trapped other children and she's even kidnapped Coraline's parents. So the little girl has to, of course, figure out a way to set everybody free. Gaiman does this, he takes her, sort of like in a Joss Whedon way with a, that he did with Buffy, he takes this young girl and um, makes her really use her smarts and her wits to defeat all of the evil. And just when you think that everyone is safe and that the story is over, it keeps going. There's a new danger that follows Coraline back home so that she really isn't quite at rest. But she comes up with a great tricky plan and uh, ends the turmoil. So there is a happy ending, but it is a little bit scary. The indicated ages of 8 and up seem a bit too young, so I say that 11 and up is much more appropriate, at least for American audiences. As we learned with Harry Potter, they're, you know, they expect that children should be able to handle certain amounts of fright, but you know, use your discretion. The book also contains illustrations by Dave McKean, who is known to Gaiman fans for his work on Sandman and Death, The High Cost of Living. He's an Eisner Award uh, nominee, uh, very well known. In just 162 pages, Coraline is perfect for early readers. Um, if they have a book report due, I'd say this is a great book. If you're an adult and you just want to curl up with a good book on a rainy day, this is perfect. Um, a screenplay version is likely to hit the shelves because it tends to be what they do. So that way there will be a, a movie version and the original version later on. But, um, you know, I don't know that for sure. And it's easy to see how Gaiman put himself into the role of Coraline's father here. Where, um, you know, the dad's at home trying to get some work done on the computer and the little girl just needs attention he can't give it to her. 
but you know luckily Neil Gaiman and his daughters work things out in real life one of them actually helps run with his blogs and everything and um, he has a great online presence so those of us who are fans but can't really afford tickets to any of his readings or his lunches there's um, some websites to really stay in tune with all things Gaiman and if you like Coraline and I'm sure you will then there are some other things that you should check out that have nothing to do with Neil Gaiman but I think are interesting. Check out The Dolls by Christy Kane at ChristyKane.com. She's also got a trailer for an independent movie called Calla Lily which stars one of her dolls. And for a much longer read, check out Cornelia Funk's Ink Heart. That's also going to be a movie very very soon starring Brendan Fraser. Um, so that's it for now. Pick up Coraline, the movie collector's edition. I'm Amber, your superhero stylist. Thanks for tuning in.